before I tell you all about these big machines behind me, I want you to notice just how large they are. Dyeing fabric requires a lot of heat and a lot of electricity. So if you're noticing the prices of your fabrics going up, it's not because fabric suppliers are being greedy. It's because the price of oil and gas has been steadily increasing this year. And we need to keep the lights on and all these machines running in the dye house, and that's why prices are going up. Now, these machines are massive, and they take more than just one roll of fabric to run. On average, a roll of fabric has about 50 to 90 meters, depending on how heavy it is. These machines take about 300 or more meters of fabric. So what we need to do is sew all of the rolls of fabric together before we can dye them. Different machines are used to dye different types of fibers. The machine behind me dyes fibers like polyester, nylon, and other polyamides. The reason you need different machines for different fibers is because the dyes require different processes. Let's take a look at this machine. Machines that dye polyester and other synthetic materials tend to be very long. This machine starts here and doesn't end until all the way over here. Basically what is happening is this entire tube is being filled with dye and water and the fabric is being shaken throughout it. It is super hot in here, so I had to put my hair up. If you forgot, dyeing takes a lot of heat, so it is like an inferno. This type of machine is used to dye cotton fabric. Now you can see right off the bat that it's very different than the polyester machine because this is a circle and the polyester machine was a long tube. What's happening here is the fabric is actually moving through the machine in a continuous circle but the water and the dye solution is only filled up about halfway. So the fabric, as it goes around, is getting air and then it's being submerged in dye and water. It's getting air and being submerged again. And this type of process will create a better dyed cotton fabric. And this third type of dyeing machine behind me right here can dye all types of fibers. Cotton, viscose, polyester, nylon, you name it, you can dye it. It is probably the biggest machine that they have here dyeing up to 600 kilos of fabric. But what's cool is that it can be sectioned off and dye 200, 400, or use the whole machine to dye 600. This is great for people who can't meet that 600 MOQ and need a smaller order. Now, if 600 kilos of fabric sounds like a lot to you, that's because it is. Luckily, there are machines like this one that will do as low as 10 kilos, meaning about a roll of fabric. And this is perfect for small brands that are just starting out or larger brands that might want to test something before they commit to a bigger order. And I have one last sample machine to show you. How cute is this one? This is basically a super tiny version of the polyester synthetic machine that I showed you earlier. Except this machine will only do three kilos, so just a little, even maybe smaller than a roll amount of fabric. Once the fabric is done being dyed, it goes into a bin, like one of the ones behind me, where it will be moved to be dry. This fabric here is wet. What's happening is it's going to move into the machine. Once it's in the machine, it's going to pass through a solution. This solution is basically like a fabric softener. It's going to give the fabric a nice soft hand feel. Once the fabric has the softening solution, it's going to go up through these rollers and on to the next process. The next part of the drying range is called the tenter frame. What's happening here is the fabric is being clipped to the edges of the machine, so when it goes through the oven back there to be fully dry, it stays nice and uniform. Without the tenter frame, you would see really uneven dyeing and the edges of the fabric looking wavy. Once the fabric is set on the tenter frame, it moves into what is essentially a really large oven. And all that heat is what's going to help dry the fabric quickly. I'm gonna show you. All right, once the fabric is dry, it moves through this part of the machine where it is folded and then packaged to be shipped. The fabric I just showed you was folded because it's actually going to have another process happen to it. If the fabric is done when it's dry and it's ready to go to the customer, what we're going to do instead is roll it like this. Hear ye, hear ye. Now, there are also a couple of other really important quality control steps that are happening here at the 
the end. The die house is taking about 20 centimeter cuttings of every single roll of fabric that passes through. They're then gonna take those cuttings, which you can see here, and check for color variation. Now, this might look really similar to the second roll, but by the time you get to the sixth, the 20th, the 30th roll, the color could have changed and there could be shade variants. That's what we're looking for. We wanna make sure that every roll is exactly the same. Once the color is checked, it's going to be put onto a roll like this. This roll is then going to go back to the laboratory where we're going to test the shrinkage and make sure that all the rolls are shrinking evenly. Now, if you've gotten a shirt where maybe you washed it once and like the front starts to twist or it feels a little wonky, that could be because the front panel is shrinking differently than the back panel of your shirt, so it's causing it to become all wonky. By having every single roll tested with these 20 centimeters, we're making sure that everything shrinks uniformly and your garment will remain perfect. All right, now we're moving into the warehousing part of the process. All this fabric here behind me has been dyed, it's been dried, but it's going to get another process. That process could be some sort of finishing or it could be printing, depends on the customer. Here we have all of the raw materials that are waiting to be dyed. This machine behind me isn't running, but it's super cool and I wanna tell you a little bit about it. What it is, is a mercerization range. Mercerization is the process of adding sodium hydroxide to cotton fibers. Now you might be wondering, why would I wanna do this? It's going to increase the strength of your fabric, add shine and luster, which is often seen as a luxury element, and also create something that has a much nicer, softer, flowy hand feel. The way it works is that cotton, when you cut the fiber in half and look at its cross section, has the shape of a bean. Now when you add the sodium hydroxide to the cotton, you're gonna cause that bean shape to swell into a circle and that's what's going to give the cotton fabric all of these elevated properties. Mercerization is a pretty eco-friendly way to add strength, longevity, and increase the perceived value of your fabric. Welcome to the color kitchen. This room right here is basically the same as the lab that we were in creating the lab dips, except on a much bigger scale. This is where all of the dye gets mixed for production orders. So you can see to my left right here, we have a huge machine that can hold up to 120 different colors that will then be mixed based on the recipe in the computer and sent directly to the dye machines. Now this is pretty cool because it's pretty modern. In a lot of older dye houses, what happens is the color is mixed. It then has to be transported to the machines, manually put in and dyed like that. But here it sends it directly to the machine that it needs to go to. Here they're reloading one of the colors in the dye machine. And that's the dye house.